Hi again, thanks so much for listening to the Renaissance Space podcast. We chat with professionals and experts to bring unique insight into the hottest topics throughout the global world of education. Brought to you by Renaissance Learning. In our World Book Day special episode of brand new series, A World of Reading, Margaret speaks to school reading leads Rachel Coverdale and Georgina Sheridan. They discuss how they've supported children with maintaining reading engagement and monitoring reading development throughout remote learning. Please do subscribe to the podcast. You can also find us on iTunes, Spotify and Google Podcasts. Just search the Renaissance Space Podcast and don't forget to leave a comment or start a conversation about any Renaissance Space episode on Twitter using the hashtag, hashtag Renaissance Space. Enjoy the episode. Welcome to our podcast. Uh, it's just been announced that schools will be going back on March the 8th. It's probably true to say that schools haven't been anywhere. They have all been working anyway, but in the full sense of the word, children will be returning in their entirety on the 8th of March. We're very pleased to have uh, Rachel Wilkinson and Georgina Sheridan, who I will ask to introduce themselves in a moment. And they're going to be talking about life in school around reading around assessing children and we'll reflect back probably on covid so without further ado uh, rachel would you like to just give us a quick overview of who you are and uh, where you are hello my name is rachel wilkinson i'm a secondary school librarian at nunthorpe academy and i'm also an author under the pen name rachel coverdale and I write picture books for very small children and action adventure books, middle grade for years five to nine. Fantastic, thank you, Rachel. And Georgina. Hi, I'm Georgina Sheridan and I'm a year six teacher at Brooklyn's Farm Primary School. Um, I also look, um, look after reading across uh, the whole school and we're a sixth form entry primary school in Milton Keynes. Fantastic. So it's really nice to have um, conversation with people who are talking from secondary perspective and a primary perspective and uh, to hear their views on that. So let's start with reluctant readers because that's always a topic that everybody's interested in. It's, it's often boys but not always. Um, Georgina, children coming back in two weeks time, what are you going to do to make sure that those children who probably haven't picked up a book, if truth be told, during that period, what are you going to do with them? Yeah, from our online learning, our remote learning, we can see that there is quite a few children that haven't engaged with reading at home. And we know from knowing our children that there's a lot without books at home um, and that haven't had the same opportunities as perhaps some other children. So we are quite concerned about them coming back. Uh, there's lots of talk at the moment about what we can do. It's amazing that World Book Day is coming up so we can really push the engagement and the love for reading. Um, but for things for us, we are looking at um, making sure we pick up one-to-one -one reading really, really quickly. Um, getting their star test done again so that we can get them back on the right ZPD and they can be reading and enjoying books from our libraries. Um, yeah, there's lots of lots of different aspects, knowing the children and the teachers really engaging with them about what we can do moving forward. Fantastic. Yeah. And in a secondary school, Rachel, it's probably slightly different. You're, you're in a library, presumably. Um, how are you going to library. engage? Unfortunately, at the moment, the children aren't allowed in the library. So that has created problems for us. When the children were not in school the first time, we created an e-library, which is intended to plug the gap. And for a lot of children, it has plugged the gap. For a lot of students who love to read, it's been a real lifesaver for them. But for the children who don't want to read, they're actually less likely to read an e-book than they are to pick up a paperback book. So it, it's... It's been good in some ways, but it hasn't helped the students that we really need to reach. Um, we have been allowing our children to quiz from home. So, um, as Georgina said, we can see from our stats that some children are really engaged and some children have not read a single book during this whole time. And we've had to be really careful because we don't want to, we've been so worried about their mental health, we don't want to come down on them and say, right, you haven't done this, so this is going to happen. We've been doing the nicely, nicely um, contacting parents and explaining how beneficial it is and, and sort of working around it that way. 
what we found with secondary school boys mostly, obviously not all boys and so a lot of girls as well, but stereotypically our reluctant reader boys are competitive. So we have competitions running with Accelerated Reader all the time. And we have prizes, which usually are some form of food. <laughs> this term, it's donuts. Um, and we use the engaged minute for the competition because if we use um, the amount of words read, then they immediately say, well, I can't read as much as so-and-so who's you know, already a word millionaire. So we use engaged minutes because it obviously adjusts for their ability. And we usually get good take-up of that in school, but we haven't had good take-up of that at home. So I can't wait for them to be back in school so that we can actually have that up and running. Fantastic. We're very similar. We've just done the same thing. We are just, at the moment, recreating our environments in school while we've got the opportunity. Um, we've got all staff in school and we're predominantly looking at reading environments and how we can make them more engaging and really building that pleasure and the love for reading. Um, so we've done the same. We're looking at... Um, engagement for accelerated reader minutes and we're looking at leaderboards and we're asking the children to take ownership of those so we're going to have a small team of children that work with um myself on each site and they'll be in charge of looking at the data pulling it off accelerated reader with me and then go putting it up on the leaderboards and reporting it back to the classes through almost um it'll be through a video recorded but we're going to call it a mini podcast within school so they'll do a podcast weekly back to each of the classes just to try and push that engagement and they're going to, we're going to try and push for like um, star speakers so different children can come in and speak on the podcast to all of the different classes and really push um, engagement and children wanting to be part of that. Because I think in primary, it can be really lost if children are just there and the books are just there. They're not quite mature enough to access everything by themselves. They need a lot of recommendations and a lot of help with choosing of books, which after COVID and being at home, we don't have all that time to be giving just to helping children choose books. We don't have um, like secondary schools like a librarian that can has that time as well to offer. So I think if we're having children recommending the books, it's really going to help push that as well. That peer review, I think, is so important, isn't it? And if you can do that via podcast, you're obviously going to get a different um, profile of child involved as well, because some children are much more comfortable in that space, aren't they, than than in reading yeah we found that children um we've been asking them to do book reviews from home and some of the children just won't write it down even though they're typing it they will not write it but they're happy to record themselves and send it over which it isn't necessarily to the standard but what they're telling you about the book is much higher than if we got them if we forced them to write it so we're trying to bring in different creative ways now of sharing experiences of books So you've both mentioned um, where the children are at and, and their experience over this last year, really, give or take different months when they were in for, for small periods. Rachel Starr um, obviously is a placeholder, but is so much more in terms of what it can deliver by way of information and, and data. I wondered what, what you could say about you know, what, what's going to happen when the children come back as far as assessment goes. So we use Star Reading. We, we have all the Key Stage 3 students assessed through Star Reading at the beginning of every term. Um, we obviously use it to track progress, but as I said, it's so much more than that. One of the first things we do, especially this September just gone because the children haven't done SATs, is we use the information to find out who needs literacy intervention um, and which strands of literacy intervention they specifically need as well. And then normally we're able to target those. And we have some um, learning support assistants who deliver certain interventions and I deliver certain interventions. But because of bubbles, that's been really, really limited. So it's only been those that have come up as read on urgent intervention who would have actually received any intervention. Um, so we've got an awful lot of that to try and catch up on. Um, but what I find a lot of the time as well is once we get them, we couldn't get them to star test at home because that would just be a disaster. We, you know, even in the classroom, we get children who manage to complete a star test in three minutes flat. So it, it wasn't an option. Um, I always tell them, gosh, you'd be really clever because it took me half an hour to do mine. <laughs> um, so we're going to, we, didn't, we weren't able to do the January one. So we're going to be bringing them back um, on the 8th of March and we will do a class at a time. But again, we've still got restrictions because they can't move classrooms. We have been set up like a primary school since the beginning of all this, where the students stay in the classroom and we come to them. 
So our computer suites are only used by four. We've got four computer suites and the four class, classes that are in there, great. After that, I've got one set that's made up half of Kindles and half of iPads. And I run to every classroom during their literacy lesson and, and trying to get them all star tested. So it took me all of the first half of the autumn term to get everybody tested the first time. And it will take me weeks again to do it. This time we're a huge school. We've got 1,600 students, including the sixth form. Wow. So uh, we're, only keep, we're only testing the key stage three, but even so that's almost 900 students. Um, wow. Yeah, so we're not going to be able to use the data quite as intricately as we normally do. It is going to be right, who's really slid backwards. I think backwards is going to be the first target and who's struggling at the bottom and unfortunately the rest are just going to be continue to be dragged with food and <laughs> <laughs> see what you can do yeah and the puppet cooks, which always go down really well um, oh, i'll tell you what the children really love as well when they're at primary school um each time they pass a quiz they fill up a sunflower at secondary school it's a bar that shows the amount of words and i did that the first year and then children who come up from primary said, oh, where's, where's my sunflower? I want a sunflower. And as soon as I put the sunflowers in, everybody loved it. So my strong recommendation to all secondary school is put the sunflower back in because they love it. They fill up their sunflower like, woo! -hoo! <laughs> Fantastic. So Georgina, how about you um, as far as assessing the children goes? Yeah, so we put, um, as a school, we put the data in the children's hand um, from our star data and for a lot of um, our assessments uh, here. Um, we encourage the children to take ownership of their learning journey um, throughout all subjects, but more so in reading. So they'll do their star test. Um, and then from that, we sit down and have a one to one conference with all the children in our classes. It is different in primary because we spend a lot of time with our class, so they don't move around as much. Um, so it's easier any spare moment in um, <coughs> excuse me, reading lessons and in um, what we have drop and read lessons, which is like a free reading. Um, we have one-to-one -one conferences with the children where we discuss their recent, most recent star test. We look at the colourful bar that there is and we look at where they are. And then we look at what recommendations um, star gives us of where they, what they're, where they need to close and where they're at at the moment. Um, and with that child, we then look at the summary dashboard where we can see the graph that shows them where they're projected to be and what they need to do to get there kind of thing. Um, and we just find here with the children, if they see it visually and they're part of that process and they haven't just got a teacher telling them, oh, your next step is this, they, they take more ownership and they really want to build on it. So they then share that through a grow plan with their parents at home. Um, and we share that during our assessment mornings, which is like our parents' evenings here. And um, we have the parents in the classroom normally on when it's not COVID. Um, and then um, the children really take ownership and any child that you speak to here, um, can articulate where their, what their next step is and where that next step's come from and how what they can do to close it because they've had that one-to-one -one conversation. So I would say star test for us going back on the 8th of March is the most important thing. We are limited on devices, but we do what we can to get them done in um, quite mean. I give everybody from years two to six here. We have, um, we're six form entry, but we give everybody uh, two weeks to get them done so everyone is expected to have every child star tested within that two week period we can then look I can work with the teachers to really understand their classes data and individuals and we can then begin to put the plans in place for interventions which is really really helpful without the star assessments going back after this would make it really really difficult on understanding where the children are and who's being able to see quickly who's gone backwards so who needs that urgent intervention or even just encouragement to pick up a book again because yeah. sometimes it could just be they haven't gone back backwards necessarily they're just out of practice yeah it's very yes. similar to over the summer days I expect them to go backwards but it's this is they've had the opportunity to read during this time but they some children just haven't taken that up so it's just what we can do using that data I love I love that whole concept of the children owning their data I, I was lucky enough to visit your school once and having this conversation with a child who was looking at their reading dashboard and articulating for me where they were, where they were going and where they were um, three weeks earlier um, was just so powerful. And that whole ownership of, of my journey um, was just being played out in front of me. So absolutely fantastic.
The doors open and it's another world. Myon is more than a library platform. It gives students all the choices and you all the tools. With a growing collection of thousands of enhanced books, accessible in school and at home, each student has their own profile, allowing Myon to offer them personalised recommendations according to their individual interests and reading levels. And there's no rationing of how many people can be reading the same book at the same time. World well, Book Day is obviously coming up um, and um, is a, a huge opportunity to put books in the hands of children who wouldn't normally have that opportunity. Um, we have quizzed all of the World Book Day um, books, so they will be available um, to anybody, so not, not just um, accelerated reader customers. Rachel, how do you envisage World Book Day panning out this time? So I love the World Book Day books. Um, we, our, all our children know their ZPD, their range of levels. Um, but where I think some people go wrong is that they think that they can only read books within that level, or they think that only little books have low levels and only big books have high levels. And I think the World Book Day books really turn that round because they're all really little reads, but they range from you know very low levels up to very high levels. And the relief on, on some children's faces when they come into the library and they say, oh, um, I have to read a book. My teacher said, I have to read a book. Um, and they say, what level are they? And they've done really well in the star test, but they still don't like reading. And so how about this little one? Oh, oh okay. Oh, yeah, right, okay. Because unfortunately, not all children... The, the reluctant readers don't necessarily choose by what they like. They just look for the smallest book in the library. And obviously, the smallest book might not be the the, uh, the best level for them. So the World Book Day books are, in, are, are brilliant because they're small, quick reads, quick wins for our children who are reluctant readers but actually quite capable readers. Because it's surprising how many of those we have. You, you, you suspect them, if they come in and they're reluctant reader, you think they're going to have a low level, but not necessarily. So that's one thing. But the other thing is, it's just the choice, the range, they're so brilliant. So, so the other great thing about the World Book Day book is the variety and the choices. Um, before COVID, we had a local bookstore dropped off a great load of one pound books in the library. And we had hordes of children rummaging through them all. And there was something for everybody. Every child went away happy with their little one pound book. So I really love World Book Day. It, it really boosts literature in our school. People are talking about it. Um, obviously, as well as the one-pound books, we have lots of activities. Secondary school don't like to get dressed up, and I've always been disappointed every year because I've been told, no, don't do fancy dress, they won't take part. But this year, because they're at home on World Book Day, I've suggested if they want to dress up and send in a photograph, there'll be prizes because then they don't have to sit in the fancy dress all day. How about you, Georgina? Um, yeah, I'm a bit gutted that World Book Day falls while we were at home because in a primary school there is such a huge buzz on World Book Day and even the, the days leading up to it because lots of the Key Stage 1 children will create things leading up to World Book Day. Um, this year we'd worked with um, a lead literacy consultant from um, up north who had given us some ideas on doing a whole school project around um, one book and how we can link in lots of the things that they would have missed due to the first lockdown and how we could have built in different areas of the curriculum through that one book and through all six year groups um, and the early years setting as well, um, which we have decided not to do that as we're um, at home and we wouldn't quite be what we wanted it to be. So we're going to save it for um, September when we can do things properly. Um, but yeah, in a primary school, there's such a huge buzz and the children get so excited. The dressing up is definitely a huge part of it. Um, and just them really seeing the teachers enjoying books because we have a big thing about the teachers making sure that they are showing their enjoyment and their pleasure for reading on World Book Day and always having a book with them. Um, yeah, I just think it is disappointing that it's not in school, but we've done the same. We've created a range of activities for them at home. We've kind of given them a bingo card where um, they've got to get a line or a full house and there is different rewards for those um, the children that really Fantastic. take part and we have a go. Lovely. Yeah, we try That's to be more nice. creative rather than just read a book or we're yes. doing the usual thing. Then we've got key authors for each year group as well, so the, the children can really get stuck into a particular author, which is quite nice. Nice to, to guide guide that. 
For you, it's a whole class teaching tool, a main check-in point for learning, and an integrated homework hub. You can deliver notes and activities per class or per student and easily review individual and group progress. The MyOn Project community allows lesson ideas and resource collections to be shared across the platform, between colleagues and between schools. And MyOn provides you with meaningful insights of your class's reading habits, which can be further enhanced with accelerated reader integration. The other yeah. topic of conversation um, on the news at the moment is about this catch-up funding, um, which we probably could speak another hour on, we'll, we won't. But um, if I was to say to you, uh, that catch-up funding that's coming into your school building, in whatever guise, however much it was, I'm going to give you a thousand pounds. So Georgina, in, in your role as head of um, literacy and reading um, in, in your two schools, and Rachel as librarian. How, um, first of all, Rachel, how would you use that thousand pounds? Well, I've already been given a thousand pounds from the funding earlier, yeah. <laughs> and that's how I funded my e-library. So that's, we've got hundreds of books now that children can have. Um, I always thought, obviously every library has such a small budget, every school has such a small budget. And I always thought, as long as you've got a library, every child has a book. So I didn't spend my book, my money previously on book buzz because I thought children can take books home from the library. And I really regret that decision from previous years because I now know that lots of students didn't have a book at home and didn't have access to the library, which I never envisaged ever happening. So I think one of the things I would do, I would definitely invest in book buzz this year and make sure that every child has a book in their home. Um, and the other thing I think I, I'm desperate to get authors back in because authors in the school make such a huge buzz. We have a massive lead up to it. We read in books around that author, books by the author and also books similar to that author. Um, and we've got a, a, um, a patron of reading, Steve Skidmore, who until this year has been in every year for our year sevens. And the year eights will see him coming in and say, oh yeah, we had him last year, he's great. And, and you know, the, the buzz around authors coming into school should never be underestimated it really is you have to Georgina and I were talking about recently you have to choose your author wisely you get the right author in it's really really successful fantastic so Georgina I'm giving you this thousand pounds unless you've already been given the oh, thousand pounds there is so much that you could do with it it's <laughs> gonna be hard and um, from re-looking really our environments during lockdown and really looking at what is available for the children we have probably haven't stocked up on our um, AR library in a couple of years. Um, so we would we are planning on um, buying in quite a quite a big um, load of new books, um, updating the library with more recent books that have come out, re-looking really at different authors and different ways that we can engage the children. And for us, it's audiobooks as well. How can we bring audiobooks now into the classroom? Um, but from talking to Rachel as well, she's um, really persuaded me. We've only done the had the author in school a couple of times, but really sporadically, and it's it has created a massive buzz. So we are going to look at having um, an author in early September to really ignite the world of reading and to promote um, di different different ways of reading, and that and almost for them to see an author that and. I think a lot of children stereotype of what an author looks like, where they sit to read a book, where they sit to write a book, what the book's going to be about. Um, especially these days with in the types of authors that they're seeing with um, the popular books at the moment. So it'd be really nice to see that anybody can write a book and you can write it anywhere. Um, you don't have to have a, fence, a fancy place to sit or um, a fancy pen to write it with or it just can be really natural so we want to encourage children that everybody is an author and you can all create books and we're quite lucky with it our head teacher is um is writing a book about learning at the moment and she shares it regularly with the children and she also shares her um, imperfections when she's writing it and her mistakes and things so it's really nice for the children to see that they're starting to see that anybody can write and anybody can create a book so hopefully I would do something along that. 
I think that's really interesting yeah. too, because I, I think you know we all know as teachers that writing obviously comes out of reading. Um, and if you're not reading, then your writing is, is not going to be as effective and as interesting. So I think all of that linking it in and, and modeling for children what the, the ideal scenario is, is, is really important. Just really, um, Georgina, I had one question for you. You have my on in um, at Brooklyn, yeah. don't you? How, how have you found yeah, that? Yeah, we do. We have um, I'm really enjoying it. The children are really enjoying it. It's very similar to the books, though. The children that are engaged with reading are absolutely flying with it. The um, the books that they're reading, the recommendations that they're giving is, is fantastic. And it, it's definitely helping. We use Google Classroom. So on the stream, we're asking any children that read on my own just to put a little snippet of the front cover or a little blurb about it to encourage others, which is really, really helpful. And it does help that it's online so children can access it. Um, we, I looked this morning actually at our engagement data for Mayon for the difference between lockdown one back um, before the summer to now and we've increased by about 40% and we've just wow. started to include year one on that as well. So our data and our um, engagement for Mayon has been really strong this time around. It has been driven by the teachers a lot more and we've incorporated it into our um, non-core learning as well. And we're recommending as teachers different books to the children but it's been a really valuable resource during lockdown and we're just starting to plan of how we can use that in the classroom and how it doesn't kind of then get forgotten about or get lost yes, because yes, for yeah. non-core it's, it's fabulous. yeah yeah that whole class approach Definitely. of unpacking a, a non-fiction text is 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 lovely it really lends itself to it doesn't it students develop their reading independence with tools like the built-in dictionary audio support and journal, allowing them to immerse themselves in the books. And you gain more than just a library platform. You create the paths, they open the doors. Myon, a whole world of reading. Thank you both so much for your passion, your engagement, your ideas, your obvious understanding of reading and what it brings to the table, whether we're in primary or secondary. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure, and I know people are going to find it really helpful and useful to, to talk to you. Um, you're both on Twitter, um, so maybe we need to uh, you know, make sure people know who you are so that you can respond to any comments that, that may come up as a result of listening to, to the podcast. Um, thank you very much. And um, I hope that the 8th of March is everything you want it to be, and it can be. Let's hope that that is the last time that we have this major event in any calendar, in any school year ever. Um, I think you need a big pat on the back for everything that you've done over this last year in all of the different guises, the expectations, the workload, the passion, the enthusiasm, the energy, just the, the words could keep, keep flowing. Um, I still don't really understand why there hasn't been a clap for teachers, but maybe one day. Or clap for staff in a school building. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening to our World Book Day special episode. You can find all of our World of Reading resources and information on Twitter by just searching the hashtag, hashtag World of Reading. For updates on all future episodes in the World of Reading series, or to listen to previous Renaissance Space podcast episodes, including our COVID school mini-series, please subscribe to whichever platform you're listening on. If you want to share your thoughts on this or any other episode, join the conversation on Twitter and use the hashtag, hashtag Renaissance Space. Thanks for listening. See you soon. If you enjoyed this episode of the Renaissance Space podcast, please check out the Education Joining the Dots podcast from our colleagues at GL Assessment. Thank you.